Welcome back to the OK Kite Border, and I'm more than excited to be here with my next door neighbor and good friend, Wayne, down on beautiful Lake Eufaula. Wayne, can you tell me a little bit about, and the people here, about your age and maybe some of your athletic background? I'm 66 years old. Uh, I ride a mountain bike, a road bike. I run, uh, lift weights. <clears throat> I'm fairly fit for my age. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. However, when it comes to wind sports, your experience is? None. I have no experience on a, I'm not even very stable on a paddle board, so we'll expect me to get wet today. So that's where we're going to start today, and we're going to look at the novice entering into the world of wind sports. So when wind foiling came about about a year ago, we saw it and we said, you know what, this could be that entry point for the novice who would like to get into wind sports. So today, we'll run a little test. This will be our experiment. How long does it take? How much education? How much success? And how much fun can you have in a short amount of time of training? Good idea. Any reservations, Wayne? No. Any reservations from your wife? Maybe a little. All right, let's see how this goes. We that base. We gonna shake up this place. Say pick up, pick up that base. Yeah. We got no time to waste. Everybody say feel. Education began on land for a period of approximately 15 minutes while I was explaining to Wayne the wind window and the way that the hand wing responds to hand and body positions. I believe that the hand wing is much less intimidating than other wind power source aids. It's even much friendlier than a trainer kite. After this brief period of training, we went to the water on the sub. A couple of aids on the market currently to help with keeping a standard SUP up wind are the Slingshot Supwinder, which you install with a 3M adhesive pad and you're able to install this removable keel. Also the Duotone Drift Stopper, which is able to be interchanged between different floating vessels to increase upwind capacity when using the hand wing. This SUP was with the Supwinder and I would not expect for these tools to absolutely eliminate downwind drift in the beginning when you're using the hand wing but they are beneficial. So make sure that ideally you have shallow water conditions, and if not, make sure the person is wearing a PFD and that you have some way of reaching them if they get in trouble, even if that's only with another SUP. So Wayne felt pretty comfortable in a kneeling position riding, and even at times in a long kneeling position, but with standing and using the hand wing powered up, more than an hour of total time would be needed to become more comfortable. I was pleased though with the progress that he made in one single hour of total of tension. There aren't many wind activities on the water for a novice that I can think of where someone can experience something that they would actually describe as fun in the first hour. And that's exactly what Wayne communicated, that he had fun and he would like to do that again. So isn't that kind of exciting to see an element of the activity that we all love to at least be semi-graspable by an active but non-win sports individual in such a short amount of time. Now I know what you're thinking as a kiter or as a winger, the last thing I need is for my launch site to be bombarded by every kook with a hand wing and an SUP. But just remember for a moment what it was like the first time that you entered a wind sports activity and that feeling of power created just because of wind. Oh, yeah. Why would we not want to, at the least, share just a piece of that experience? And I know there are some locations such as Maui where the wingers are getting congested, but for inland lake riders, we have endless opportunities for this population to get their feet wet in wind sports. So look, is Wayne going to end up wing foiling with me in progress to learning how to ride a hydrofoil in the coming months? I don't know, maybe. He is a pretty determined guy when he sets his mind to something, but probably not. But he has lived next to me for six years, watching me ride a kiteboard on a twin tip, hydrofoil with a foil kite, and other wind sports. But with wing foiling, this was the first time I could talk him into sticking a toe in the water and giving it a try. And that should say something about the decreased intimidation that the hand wing offers. The wind wing, I believe, will also become a great and safe training tool for getting your kids into wind sports. Just the ability to dump the power of the wing so easily gives it great appeal 
for all ages. What I do currently see as a major obstacle for the general public is the entry price. Cost has always been a large hurdle in the wind sports industry and current wing models are anywhere in the 700 to a grand range which really puts it in the category of committed wing foiling. I'm not sure why it's not possible to have access to a more affordable entry level wing, something in that five to six hundred dollar range. I believe this would open up the reach for hand winging and a point of entry for wind sports by the novice population. So I've been consulting with an inflatables company to come out with the five meter Lahoma hand wing to be released this spring and at a more affordable price point for the entry level wind sports person. You will be able to purchase the Lahoma wing at Green Hat Kiteboarding along with an inflatable wing foil board and inflatable SUP option. And I'm optimistic that more budget friendly wing foil options can increase the reach to this rewarding activity. Another great tool that I just discovered and purchased for 150 bucks for my kids, okay, it was for myself, is the Tri Deck. It has a removable front handle and it will aid us well in pairing with the hand wing for land training and practice on multiple surfaces throughout the winter. So the utilization of a land board paired with a hand wing opens up a new activity that anyone can also enjoy. So if we are able to take away some of these obstacles for the novice, such as intimidation from kite flying with the lines, the bars, harnesses, etc., and the cost of these kites, bars, lines, kite boards, harnesses, and use already existing SUPs, graveyard wind boards, or surfboards, and purchase an economically prudent wind wing, a cheap kill adapter, and maybe a land board, then how many more people on the sidelines and the youth could be exposed to this great world of recreational wind power? And how many would then proceed into interest to progressing into these very wind sports that we love and these communities that we cherish? Just my two cents, please comment below. It's okay, I can take it. And please subscribe and reach out to Green Hat Kiteboarding for all your wind sports needs. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next time on the OK Kiteboarding.